Frenzy on News 18. Sports from where you live. We are back on the Frenzy Bree. Clear skies, a little breeze tonight. It might be time to finally invest in a light jacket for next week. JD, I've been putting that off for a while. <laughs> I don't want those colder weather. You have to but... retire the polo. <laughs> oh, no. Here yeah. we go. But we have six more games for you right now. So why don't you just say we jump right into it and start off the madness. And starting off strong with the madness, we'll take Central Catholic visiting Twin Lakes. The Knights versus the Indians, a matchup like no other. Both teams going into this matchup with pretty similar records, but one team will come out with a blowout. First quarter action, Twin Lakes on the ball, and the pass is thrown and caught by Blaze Woods. Two Knights are on the tackle, but there's a fumble on the play, and it's CeCe's ball. Knights are now on the attack, and CC fans are excited about this one. Later on, CC is trying to get something going here, and the pass by Clark Barrett is broken up by the Indians and almost picked off. That was a close one for CC. On defense now, Knights are looking to stop the Indians dead in their tracks, and a quarterback sack leads to another fumble. Talk about Butterfingers. Keegan O'Connor picks it up, and it's a 34-yard fumble return. Touchdown, CC, and all the players go nuts. And this wouldn't be the last time CC will run the ball into the end zone tonight, JD. Final score, Central Catholic wins 63-7, to and the Indians drop another one. All right, move out east, another lopsided scoreboard. Lafayette Jeff visiting Richmond. This is a game that Lafayette Jeff hasn't lost since 2014, and it looks like history repeats itself tonight. The Broncos blow the doors off the Red Devils, 70-0 to the final. Jeff hosts Logansport next week. Well, now let's head out west where Tri-County hosts the Frontier Falcons. Both teams are looking for their very first win of the season here, and one team will get it. Second quarter action. Falcons are looking to get moving here on third down and long, and the Falcons decide to use their wings and fly. Ball goes up, but it's a hair too far for Danny Welding to catch. It's now Tri-County's turn to try their luck on offense. Kobe Baller drops back and has time to throw, but it's almost picked off by a Falcon. That was another close one. It's 18-16 as we head into the third quarter. Falcons back on the ball and big man Dustin Peterson with the carry. Cavaliers have a hard time bringing him down, but once he's down, the ball pops out and Tri-County recovers it. But that will be one of the last great plays for the Cavaliers on defense. Final score, Frontier 36, Tri-County 32, and the Falcons will fly home tonight with their first win. Congratulations to Troy Burgess and company. That was fun, but we are not done quite yet. Three more games on week seven of the Frenzy. That's right, JD. We have so many more games left, and this next game was a fun one. We joined Peter Hewlett back again for a second time, and he tells us what happened during his matchup between North Newton versus Delphi. Hey there, Peter. Hey, Bree. Well, guys, if you're a lover of defense, then this one is for you. Just three touchdowns scored between Delphi and North Newton. Let's see how this one went down. We'll pick up the action in the second half. North Newton is evidently trying to kick it into high gear. For that, they'll call on Gavin Johnson in the red zone. He's in motion and takes a handoff, and oof, he earns all six of those points as he's knocked into the end zone. A failed two-point conversion makes it 14-0. Oracle's trying to make something happen now. Quarterback Cade Nelson feeling out the pocket. He's going to roll out and send this one high into the sky. It's anybody's ball, and North Newton's Lane Xander says, I'll have that one. Unfortunately for the Air Oracles, there's more of that to come. Similar situation. Nelson rolling left, and he's going to fire, but it's into triple coverage and picked off by Alex Miller. Oracles would eventually score, but it wouldn't be enough. 14-7 is your final from Delphi. All right, thank you again, Peter. Moving over to Royal Center. Pioneer hosting Knox. The Panthers haven't lost this game in the last 35 years through seven meetings. Second quarter action, start with Pioneer ball. Brock Robinson takes flight. Derek Legrand is there to make the snag. Touchdown home team, 38 to 20 the score on last year's outing. This one with just as much offense. Now the visitors have it. Cohen Watson will toss to the big man. Just look at him. You'll love to see big men doing big things. Lucas Porter plowing through the defense. First down knocks, but no points on the board for them. Panthers will try again, still second quarter, still 12 to zero. Robinson will do it all himself. This is a touchdown for the Michigan Wolverines. Oh wait, that's Pioneer. The team from Royal Center wins it by 20, 34 to 14, the final score. All right, we're back south, headed to Frankfurt, a tough test for the Hot Dogs. Danville outscoring its last three opponents by 98 to seven combined. Same old song and dance at the yard. BJ Woost for the score. 
Defense clicking for the visitors too. Caden Maddock records the pick. Warrior head coach Jamie Comer 16-2 in his second year with the team. It looks like another one in the W column tonight. Tyler Dostin makes the grab. The 6-3 tight end makes it 14 to zip. And Danville never takes its foot on the gas. They spoil hot dog homecoming. 41-16 the final score in Frankfurt. That team with one more home game this season, hosting North Montgomery at 7 p.m. And just like that, the high school football portion of our show is over tonight. Notice how I said football. One more highlight remains on our show. That's right. West Lafayette and Harrison faced off earlier today in the sectional tennis finals. We have the highlights from that matchup coming your way after the break.